this time, take out your stationery and get ready for class. Okay, before we start, let me take your attendance first. Simon? Yes. Good. Alvin? Yes, me. Why are you smiling? Get your eyes. Yes, please. Okay, now let me check what you bring. Alvin, why do you need tape? Is this bubble gum? Oh no! Oh my goodness! And what is this? <laughs> do you think you can prank me with chocolate? No food, no snack. Candy! My goodness, there's an egg on it. So, as a consequence, we need to lead our prayer today. Dear Lord Jesus, thank you for your blessing. Now we want to start our class. Please bless us. In the name of Jesus, Amen. Now open your Bible. We're going to start our devotion. Psalm 23. Amen. Yes, me. Open your Bible. Yes. Is that Bible? Let me check. Is that Holy Bible? Let's see what's inside. Now then. One, two, three. Oh no. So much candies. My goodness. Live out for Jesus.
Now, let us pray our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Let's do our best to clap our hands and sing a flower for Him. I love you forever. 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 I love you I'll serve, I'll serve you forever. I'll serve, I'll serve you Yeah. 
good and bad habits. But do you know what habit is? Well, habit is a pattern of behavior that is repeated. Or in other words, we can say that habit is the things that we do a lot, whether we realize it or not. Have you been experiencing these things lately? Like having a lot of homeworks because of your online classes or e-learning or maybe you've been fighting a lot with your siblings over danger or over a roof 
you use on your online classes or maybe you got bored because you have to stay at home all the time or maybe you got bored and your parents nagging at you all the time well how do you respond to these two questions are you blaming this pandemic or maybe the government for making rules that we have to stay at home or even blaming God for making these things happen you understand that these four months have been hard and difficult for everyone we have to stay at our home we cannot meet our friends, our family, our loved ones and we cannot go to the places we like but we have to remind ourselves that getting angry or being sulky all the time will not make anything better. So, how should we respond? Well, these next two Sundays, we are going to learn how we can improve ourselves even in the midst of crisis. Now kids, to remember these important habits, let's learn to sing this song. I am created as a masterpiece, just wait and see what I will be. I live a life that is shining bright, be proactive and do right. First things first, I work and I play. That is the correct way Be joyful and believe I can do Like the most that impact food Attitude determines how they do The choice is in my hands I will decide what I'm gonna do It's giving my working for the Lord, not for men. Okay, let's repeat. Colossians 3 verse um, 23 Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord, not for men. Okay, um, let me say that again. Colossians 3 Verse 23. Ugh, I can't memorize this. There must be a trick to help me remember it because I can't do it. Hmm. Let me Google. Oh, okay. Five tricks to help you memorize. Number one, exercise to clear your head. Colossians 3. Uh, no. I guess I have to clear my head. Number 2. Eat something nutritious to give your brain energy. Food for your brain. Number three, do not multitask. Hmm. Hmm. Oh no! Uh, uh. <sighs> Number four, write it down 
over and over again. Number five, teach other people. Okay, I got it. Colossians 3, verse 23. Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord, not for men. Yes! Okay, what's step five? Teach other people. Hmm. Okay, I'm going to teach you this week's SMV. It's from Colossians 3, verse 23. Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart, as working for the Lord, not for men. You got it? She got it! So, have you guys remembered the SMV? Let's read it together one last time. Colossians 3, verse 23. Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord, not for men. I hope you already memorized the scripture. But if you need help, remember those five tricks. See you next time! Okay children, now it's math time. We are going to study about hours, addition, and subtraction. Ooh, I love math. I have several questions to start. Raise hand if you can answer me. Question number one. How many hours are there in a day? Ooh, I know, I know, I know. Uh, it's easy, it's 24 hours. Good, Simon. Now question number two. How long would we usually sleep in a day? Me, me, me. Yes. Hours, Good. Then how many hours left do we have? Alvin? What was the question, Miss? This is not the first time you are sleeping in the class. These are your test results. Simon got 100. Theodora made a small mistake. She got 95. And Alvin, you only got 45. Why is that? Oh, because I cannot concentrate, Miss. My younger brother always distracts me. I don't have enough sleep at home because... You play gadget online over the night, right? But Vincent always asks me too. How do you know? Your mom told me. She's pretty upset. See me after class. Okay, Miss. Uh... Now, Simon. Theodora just said that we have 16 hours at home to do our activities. What do you do with yours? Oh, I woke up at 6 a.m. every single day. Then I have class from 7 to 12. After lunch, I volunteer to help my mom because we don't have any helper at home. So I volunteer to do the dishes, to water the garden, and to sweep the floor. Then, and in the afternoon, I will study for the test and do my homework. Good, Simon. That's what we call being proactive. Meaning, doing the right thing without your being told to. That is good. And if you keep this habit, you will be very successful. Now, Theodora, what do you do with your 16th hours? Oh, I have a lot of things to do, miss. My mom is a single parent, so she works so hard to pay for my school fees. I do all the things at home by myself. I clean the house, cook, and
and then take care of my younger sister. By the way, miss, I have this dates that I made at home and I sell it online. Wow, those are very nice. But how do you manage your time? Oh, my mommy said that as a student, my main job is to study. So my first priority is to study and do my homework at home. Then after that, the second one will be doing all the housework. So I do need this bracelet when my sister is taking a nap. So it's my free time. Wow. Excellent. That's what we call putting first thing first. Means you know which one is more important, then you do it first, and which one is less important, then you do it later. Good job, dear Dora. Alvin, you need to start doing these two habits. Being proactive and putting first thing first. Then you will be successful. Okay, miss. I'm sorry I always blame others for the bad thing that I do. Okay. Now let's read this out loud together. In a count of three. One, two, three. I want to give my best in all that I do. Very good. Now I remember there is a man in the Bible called Nehemiah. He has these two habits, being proactive and putting first thing first. And he helped building God's ruined temple in Jerusalem. Let's listen to the story. The people of Israel were exiles in the land of Persia. God punished them for their ongoing sin and disobedience and took away his protection from them. So the Persians came and destroyed the city of Jerusalem and took the Israelites as their slaves. One of these Israelite slaves was a man named Nehemiah. His job was to serve food to the king and to make sure it was safe to eat. Though most of the Israelites lived in Persia, there were a few that survived and were still left in the broken down Jerusalem. He missed Jerusalem and wanted to go back and help those people. Nehemiah could not stop thinking about and praying for Jerusalem. He was sad all the time. One day, while Nehemiah was before the king, the king said, Nehemiah, why are you so sad? Are you sick? Is something troubling you? Nehemiah couldn't hold it in any longer. O oh, king, live forever. My home country, my father's land, is in ruin. The king was concerned and offered to help Nehemiah. Nehemiah told the king that he wanted to go back to Jerusalem and rebuild it as well as the walls around it. So Nehemiah asked the king for building supplies. He also asked the king to write a letter that he could show to anyone on his journey back to Jerusalem. This letter bore the seal of the king and protected Nehemiah as he traveled back to Jerusalem. It was a long and dangerous journey, but Nehemiah was excited to go back. As they neared Jerusalem, they could see its ruins in the distance. The beautiful city of Jerusalem was all broken down, with no wall around it. Work began immediately. Nehemiah wasted no time and gathered all the men to help rebuild the wall. He assigned each group to their task, rebuilding sections of the walls, brick by brick. It was a big task that was going to take a long time. As Nehemiah and the men rebuilt the wall, many leaders from nearby countries tried to stop them. They threatened to kill the Israelites. Nehemiah prayed to God and did not stop working. Each day, they worked harder and harder, and the wall became stronger and stronger. After months of hard work and danger, the job was complete. There was singing, dancing, feasting, and a huge celebration. God was the one who deserved praise and glory for the finished job.
Thank God, it was just a dream. We are still studying online. From now on, I will do my best to be proactive and put first thing first. Now kids, to remember these important habits, let's learn to sing this song. I am created as a masterpiece, just wait and see what I will be. I live a life that is shining bright, be proactive and do right. First things first, I work and I play. That is the correct way Be joyful and believe I can do Like the most that impactful Attitude determines how they do The choice is in my hands I will decide what I'm gonna do It's giving science class well okay I've been I've been in a big conundrum today I've been trying to figure out this problem about life you see um, okay just hang on a minute okay um, we learned today about two habits right we learned about one doing first things first doing what matters first and then second thing we learned about being proactive so when you're ready let's dive into each one of them okay so about first things first Sometimes we wonder why certain people they get more ahead in life than us. Where right? they uh, become more successful, they become more happy. And that makes me wonder, is it because they are more handsome than me? Maybe. Or maybe because they are richer than me. Or maybe. But you see, not all of them are like that, right? There must be a secret sauce to them. Right? And you want to learn about first things first, about doing what matters first. Now, look at this. Let me just give my water. Mm. Doing first things first. Okay. Imagine that our life is this glass jar. Right? And imagine that you want to squeeze in all kind of activities, all kind of things into your life. Let's begin from the first one. Let's look at this. These are the big rocks. Now, big rocks represent all the important things in your life. What are they like? For example, your relationship with God. That should be your first rock. That should be the most important thing in your life. Second thing is about your relationship with your family, with your siblings, your brothers and your sisters. And last one is about your schoolwork. I mean, you're all children, we still all need to learn, so schoolwork becomes very important to you. And the second thing, these are the medium-sized Rocks. These are the activities or the things that are important but they may not matter that much. For example, things like your exercise. How many of you like exercise like I do? Right? Playing your basketball, soccer and so on and so forth. They are important to keep you fit and well, but are they really the first things in your life? Maybe not. What about your, like your tuition for example? You go for your guitar, piano and so on and so forth. They are good, they are important, but they may not matter as much. Okay, so that's, these are the, the medium rocks. And the last one, sands. What are the sands? The sands are the things that you do out of your hobbies, for example, right? They are not really important at all. Whether you do it or not, not really matter, not really important, okay? So think, for example, like your Korean drama, right? How many times do you watch Korean drama in a day, for example? Or like your Minecraft games, right? These are all your sense. Things whether you do or you don't do, doesn't really matter. So now, my question to you. How do you fit all this? The big rocks, the medium rocks, and the sand into your jar of life. Any idea? Anybody want to guess? Well, let's try this. All right, let's do the first try. What if we put all the sands first? 
and then the medium box, and then the big box. Does it make sense? Let's give it a try. feel that your relationship with God is, is on the right track and, and you are not touching well with your brothers and your sisters or your family members, something is wrong. Yeah? So you put all the non-important things first, then the less important and then the most important last. I don't think that's the right answer. So do we have any other way? Any idea? What if we try the big rocks first? And then later on, the middle rocks, and then the sun, and, and then the sand. Did that work? Let's give it a try. answer to my riddle. You see this? Your life is now balanced, right? You've got all the important stuff inside, you've got all the middle stuff inside, and you've got all the sense inside, right? So that's how you achieve a balanced life. Remember, first things first. Do the most important things first. All right, so what was the second habit that we learned today? We should also learn about being proactive. What does that mean by being proactive? See, being proactive, for example, if you see a dress on the floor, what do you do? Do you just keep quiet and wait for someone else to pick it up and throw it for you? Or do you call your mom and dad say, Mom and dad, I see there's a dress on the floor, I'm not going to do anything about it because that's your job as parent. Or do you go and pick it up and put it at the right place which is a trash bin? So, being a, a proactive person is someone who is willing to do the things that needs to be done without being asked for this, without being told to do. That's how you get ahead in front of everyone else. When you see a problem, and if it is within your power, within your control to do it, then do so. Alright? So, so can we wrap up? So we learned about two things, two habits today. First thing first, do the most important things. Do what you need to do first. Second one, be proactive. Don't wait for people to do, to ask you to do things, they don't need to do it. Okay? So, that's how we wrap up this week's lesson. Thank you very much for listening to me. I'll see you next time. Okay, kids, it's time for quizzes. Let's see whether you really understand what we have discussed today. Alright, first question. Complete our SMV. Whatever you do, Work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord, not for men. Blank, chapter 3, verse 23. So what is blank? Is it A, Romans? Or B, Matthew? Or is it C, Colossians? And number 2. Choose what is your rock priority from below. A, is it Minecraft? Ooh. Or B, is it Liverpool Football Club versus Man United? see quiet moments with God. Next quiz. True or false? Being proactive is to wait for people to instruct you on what to do. True or false? Next one. Our Bible character today was proactive to lead the rebuilding of the wall of Jerusalem. He was Joseph or Moses or Nehemiah. Last one, putting first things first means A. Work first, 
then play? Or B, focus on the most important things to do first? Or C, A and B are correct. Hi, my name is Sarah and I'm from 360 News Ministry and I also previously came from JG. Uh, hello, my name is Abner and I'm going to be answering this question. Hi, my name is Michelle Morgan from 316. My name is Brian, XBG. Hello, my name is Eliana. I go to 316. We all grew up. It's normal for us to grow up. What do you think about growing up for me is about learning. So improvements, challenging, maturing, finding who we really are. Growing spiritually like really comes from ourselves and without the pandemic I wouldn't have realized that everyone is stuck at home and rather than doing nothing the pandemic is our opportunity to connect to God more personally. I learned to be more faithful to God, worship Him more, spend time with Him more and read the Bible more. Recently I moved to Singapore and well it presented challenges of its own. It kind of helped me grow in faith. The only way I feel like you can grow in spiritually is if you face challenges. I feel like in order to grow, you need to be planted in a community and not just be in one of them. Aku sangat bersyukur bisa dekat kepada Tuhan. I fell more in love with Jesus. I got to become more mature, especially if I have God with me. Before I was in 316, I barely read the Bible. Now, since I joined 316, I have read my Bible more and I also have prayed a lot more often. People grow and need to change their environment every so often to a more suitable one. The people there, they are so welcoming. If you feel scared at first, but trust me, it's just all in your head and 316 is truly one of those places you wouldn't want to miss. Uh, I feel pretty much woke up in 316 and uh, I grow in spirit. In 316, I feel very welcome because the people there are very warm, especially uh, the friends I made in cool, right? I know that I can rely on them. I can talk to them about literally anything. We grew in faith together. Going back, JG was like an amazing experience. I remember how excited and how happy I felt when I knew there was like a drama on Sunday. But time flies and our interests change. Maybe those dramas weren't as exciting. At least that's what I experienced because when I was 12, I started like losing interest. That's when I decided um, to move to 316. I remembered how welcome I felt when I first joined. Like even though I was like the new kid, the longer I stayed there, I joined cools, I ministered, I made more friends, and they practically grew and became my second family. I never regretted moving. I really recommend you guys come and join us, guys. So come join us in 316. Ayo, kita ke 316. Join 316. Becoming a part of 316. Yeah, I don't see why you shouldn't go. <laughs> Growing up, it will be held on Friday, 7 of August, starting at 7 p.m. via Zoom. You can see the link provided in the screen. So again. I hope you can join the cool as you will get chance to know more about 316 Youth Ministry. Who are we? What we do? And I truly encourage you again to join this cool. So I hope you are blessed and we welcome you to join 316 Youth Ministry. There you go. That's all we have. And next we will close it with a closing prayer. Father in heaven, we are thankful for your great faithfulness to us, for they are new every morning. Great is your mercy to us. You have blessed us with life, health, and wisdom to live according to your will. We learn today that we must put first things first in our lives and be proactive in our mindset. Help us to always put you first in our lives. Help us to do our best every day as we know that we do it only for you and not for anyone else. We pray that you continue to bless and protect our parents as they continue to work even throughout this pandemic season. Bless our church leaders and JG teachers. Bless them with health, strength and wisdom to continue leading people into the knowledge of you. 
Bless our country, Indonesia. Bless all the government leaders with wisdom and boldness to do the right thing for the people. Thank you for listening to our prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.